Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about building and using static libraries. So in the last video, we looked at some of the basics of uh, the basic differences between static libraries and dynamic libraries or shared libraries. But we haven't really talked about how we build either of these things yet. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of how we can, say, build a static library out of some C++ sources. So over here on the left-hand side of the screen, we have a simple example here. So we have a couple source files like this add.cpp and this multiply.cpp. So let's say we want to build our own kind of math library out of these source files. So let's go ahead and see what's in these files uh, to start out with. So we'll go ahead and open up both these files, this add.cpp and this multiply.cpp. And all that's really in these files is, is just a, sim a simple function, right, that performs an operation. So inside of add.cpp, right, we have this uh, integer add function that just returns the sum of a and b and likewise in multiply you know same kind of thing it just returns the product of a and b so two kind of trivial functions here but let's say we just want to combine these things and do some simple math library now all the static library really is is a collection or an archive of object files right so the tool that we use to build these static libraries uh, along with something like gcc or g to actually generate the object code is this tool or program called AR. So AR is this program that we can use to build and modify um, archives. So if we go ahead and do AR-help, we can see um, all the different options we have for this AR program. So you can see that as part of the commands, we can delete files from the archive, move files in the archive, print files, append files, replace existing or insert new files, and so on and so forth, right? So there's a whole bunch of different options we can use to modify these archives and these collections of what are typically just object files. So let's go ahead and see how we can use this to build a static library, right? So, you know, three of the common options that you'll often see used when building something like a static library are C, R, and S, right? S, right, this is, it says, you know, act as ranlib. Uh, we get a little more information a bit further down where it says that this is to create an archive index. So we use this S option to create an index for our archive. Then we have the C option, right? That says, do not warn if the library had to be created. So we're creating a, a new static library. So we'll, we'll use this option. And then we also have uh, this R option right up near the top. And it says replace existing or insert new files into the archive. So we want to create an archive and insert some files into it, right? So we'll use this R option as well. So let's go ahead and you know use this AR tool right, with some object code here. So we can start off by just compiling our add.cpp into object code. And we can do the same thing for our multiply.cpp. Uh, so now we have a couple pieces of object code in this directory, right? Add.o and multiply.o. And we want to combine these together into a static library. And so for that, again, we're going to use AR. So we'll do AR-CRS. Those are the options we just talked about. So don't worry about creating a new library, create an index for this archive. Um, and then also um, we're going to insert some things into this archive. Then we want to create some static library. So we'll call it, say, lib test.a. So this .a extension for archive. Um, th this is what we use for static libraries. Um, and the files that we want to put inside of this archive, right? So we'll put this multiply.o and this add.o, right? And there we have it, right? We have a static library that we can use, this libtest.a, right? And we can even do ar-t, right, on libtest.a. And we can see the contents right of this archive. So you can see that this libtest.a contains multiply.o and add.o. Right? So this can be a really convenient thing to use. But how exactly do we use something like this, uh, the, the, the static library or this archive, this libtest.a? Well, now we can just link against this um, when compiling, say, our main.cpp program instead of having to use all of these object files and add them all as you know sources that we pass to GCC. We can just add a linker option to say link against this libtest.a. So let's go ahead and open up this main.cpp and, and see what it's doing. And it's overall pretty simple. All we have here is you know we include IO streams so we can do some printing. Then we include the header files for add h and multiply dot h. So, you know, these files are just, you know, very simply, uh, you know, just function prototypes for those two functions. So add.h just concludes this prototype for our add function and the same thing for multiply.h for a multiply function. And then all we use inside of our, all we do inside of our main function is we just call our add function to create some sum and then print out that sum. So sum of 10 and 20 should give us 30. 
And we do this same kind of thing with multiplying. So we call multiply with 10 and 20. We get a product that should be 10 times 20, which is 200. And then we print out that product. So let's see how we can compile an executable out of this using our you know, newly created static library. So we start off by just invoking G++. So we pass in you know, our source file here, uh, main.cpp. We'll say we want to create an executable. We'll just call main. But then we have to link against our static library here. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have some of the command line options for uh, or linker options for GCC up. So if we go ahead and scroll down here. There's, there's a few very important ones when we're talking about our linker. And that's going to be this dash lowercase l and this dash uppercase l here. So very similar to, you know, with our preprocessor where we could use the dash uppercase i or dash i quote to specify places to uh, search for our header files, we can do the same thing with this dash uppercase l option, right? So we can use this to add path search deer to the list of paths that ld will search for archive libraries, right? And, and, and LD control scripts or linker control scripts. So, you know, our linker doesn't automatically know where our library exists. So we can tell uh, our linker where this library exists using this capital L option. In fact, if we just try to use the lowercase L option, which is says how we uh, add archive file to the list of files to link. So if we just did dash L and then we specified our archive name that we want to link against, now, by default, it will assume that the file begins with lib and ends with this, uh, you know, dot a. So we can just do dash l test and it will assume the name is lib test dot a. Um, by default, right, um, our linker doesn't know where to search for this library. So we'll end up seeing a linker error saying cannot find, you know, this dash l test, no such file or directory. So we have to tell our linker with this dash, you know, uppercase l. And here in this case, we'll just give it the current directory, right? Because that's where this libtest.a lives. And then you can see, you know, we cr successfully created our executable. So, you know, what all did we do in this example, right? So we compiled our, um, some source files down to object code. We combined them together into an archive or the static library. And then we saw how we could, you know, link them together with some other source file, right? Using this dash big L and dash lowercase l options for GCC. Okay, so let's go ahead and just, you know, prove that it works, right? We can run our main function here. Um, and you can see we get the correct results here. So we get a sum of 30 and a product of 200, right? So our math library seems to be working, you know, a or a okay, right? This libtest.a that we built. Um, okay, so that's some of the basics on how we can build static libraries. Again, all these static libraries are, um, you know, they're, they're really just an archive of these object files, right? Not just a collection of object files inside of this archive. Um, in later videos, we'll see how we can also build dynamic libraries, right? And some of the, the key differences between static libraries and dynamic libraries in terms of things like position independent code that we need for these shared libraries or dynamic libraries. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll make sure to link these, uh, this page for uh, these command line options for a linker below the video. And as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick. And I hope you have a nice day.